How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, I am here today, and uh, I am in lovely San Jose, California, in a... Uh, it's actually kind of a cheap uh, hotel room here, but it's awesome, because... I'm all wired up and ready to go. We got a landline, a hardwire connection right here. We've got great internet, and so we are rocking today on Observer Live, live. And uh, Mike Sempervivi will be joining us as well. And we got a lot to get into because we have got the Rampage tapings here tonight, which uh, I will be going to along with producer Dom. And then uh, tomorrow we will be at Dave's house watching the UFC pay-per-view, the return of John Jones after three years for an immediate title shot. And then on Sunday, it is the AEW Revolution pay-per-view. I have eight matches announced for the show, one of which is a, a one-hour Iron Man match. And uh, there will be more matches added at the Rampage show tonight, but they will be dark matches. It looks like this is the, uh, the full lineup for the pay-per-view itself. And so we'll go over the lineup for that. We got dynamite ratings from this past Wednesday night, the Go Home Show. We have got uh, more media notes from uh, different talent talking about this and that. Chris Jericho talking about building stars, and uh, Brian Danielson talking about his favorite moment of his WWE career, which sure is ironic after that Montreal show a couple of weeks ago. We've got notes on the AEW debut of Commander Eddie Kingston, who allegedly quit Ring, uh, quit AEW, but of course he is not. He is, uh, he is going to Ring of Honor. And we're going to take your text messages as well. 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. Hadn't thought about this, but uh, maybe we'll take some phone calls here today. Yeah. Because I forgot I can do it through byline. Yeah. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simber, BB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Yeah, we're here getting ready for uh, Rampage tonight. Dom and I heading to the show. Mike apparently is uh, not going. Is that right, Mike? Not going to Rampage tonight? No, no. My plane ticket didn't come in time, so I'm wow. remaining here 3,000 miles away. Literally. Well, we have a big show coming up tonight. We got a big show coming up on Sunday. We got all the pay-per-view matches, I believe, because uh, Tony pretty much said, you know, we got we got a lot of stuff here, including an, an hour-long Iron Man. I don't think we really need to maybe add too much more to the pay-per-view itself. So eight matches. MJF and Brian Danielson will be an hour, one hour Iron Man match for the AEW title. We have the Guns, the Acclaimed, Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett and Orange Cassidy and Dan Housen, all facing off in a four way for the tag team titles. John Moxley faces Hangman Page in what I can't help but notice in both of their promos, I don't think they actually called it a Texas Death match. They merely called it Texas Death. Well, you've got Samoa Joe and Wardlow for the TNT title. Chris Jericho versus Ricky Starks. Jamie Hayter, Soraya, and Ruby Soho in a three-way for the women's title. The Elite will be facing the House of Black for the trios titles. And Christian Cage will be facing Jungle Boy, Jack Perry in a fight. That is the lineup for the pay-per-view Sunday. Tonight on Rampage, I'm sure we'll add some... Some dark matches, some non-televised matches, but that is what we're looking at for Sunday. And looking at the show, I mean, MJF and Danielson, I'd be stunned if that were a bad match. Samoa Joe and, and Wardlow, I mean, you know, it's it's Samoa Joe, and if they do a, a Goldberg-style boom, 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 I mean, that should be fun. Moxley and, and Adam Page can't possibly be bad. And then, you know, Jericho and Stark should be very good. The Elite and the House of Black should be great. Christian and Jungle Boy. I mean, overall, I think there's one of those shows. Uh, you know, I talked to people yesterday. They were like, yeah, I'm going to watch this show, but I'm not really feeling it like I have in the past. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's probably going to end up being a pretty damn great show. So hopefully it is because I'm going to be there. I don't like going to bad shows, Mike. <laughs> I only like you know, going to the best. 
I know it. I know it. And I don't think you're going to have an issue here, too, when it comes to the match quality. Because, look, even if you didn't like the build to all of these matches, even if you think the product right now is in a little bit of a malaise or whatever you think about AEW, when you look at the matches and you figure, okay, unless there's some nonsense involved with the finishes or something, how can they not all be good? I mean, yes, the women's three-way is probably arguably the weakest of the bunch, but when you look at all the other matches, as you mentioned, I mean, everything looks pretty good. The four-way tag is probably going to be a little bit all over the place, and I do wonder, I mean, who the hell knows with FTR, but I wonder if something comes at the end of that. But all of the other one-on-one matchups, I there's something to like about almost all of them. So obviously the big match is the Iron Man match. And, uh, you know, these guys both, you know, Brian Danielson talked about it yesterday. You know, I've talked to people who have been in the ring with him of late and they just say, man, this guy is a machine. He is an unstoppable machine. So I'm certainly not worried about him. And as far as MGF goes, I mean, he's told people that he's never he's never been in better shape for a match in his life. So, you know, he's done just like a ton of training and, you know, they do the deal where, you know, sometimes he's on the show, sometimes he's not. They say he's contractually obligated. I mean, there were there were weeks where he wasn't on the show. He was he was home training. So, you know, I don't think there's going to be any issues with with cardio and, you know, the reality in a long match like that and really any wrestling match is, you know, it's it's professional wrestling. There's there's the illusory aspect to it in the sense that, you know, you're not doing an MMA fight for an hour. You're doing a pro wrestling match and you can pace the match and you can you can do, uh, you know, periods where things slow down a little and, you know, you can you can work the the physical aspect of it to a degree. You obviously have to be in, in really good shape, but. This is a little different in the sense that it is Brian Danielson, and uh, and this guy's got he's got you know he's got a few speeds, but he likes to go at one speed. So I think it's going to be a very very active one hour match. I think there's going to be a lot of twists and turns, and uh, the big question is what they do at the finish because I don't see Brian Danielson leaving with that title, but I suppose anything is possible. And more than the one speed is the amount of experience that he has number one there's not going to be a lot of spots to remember going into the thing i wouldn't think at least and even if there were you have somebody where if you do get confused if you do get flustered for a moment he can slow things down so it is very difficult again unless something bizarre happens where this won't be and i know an hour We've talked about it with Ring of Honor matches in the past where it's like, is it a good idea to tell people that it's going 60? In this case, with MJF and Brian Danielson, I think there's going to be a lot to be you know, seen as far as the story that's told and how they bring you up and down throughout the whole thing. I'm really looking forward to this. All righty. Well, uh, the rating for the show on Wednesday was not a million. So you know what that meant on Twitter. 833,000 viewers, down 19% from last week. Second lowest audience for the show since November 16. 0.27 demo, down 22.9%. Matches Dynamite's second lowest rating in the demo so far in 2023. Down in every demo. And obviously, you know, one of the... uh, one of the things with AEW is competition. And there were two NBA games on ESPN. And those two games beat AEW. They did finish third on cable with that 0.27 rating. And, uh, you know, they've done many go-home shows where they didn't do a great number on the go-home show. Obviously, you would want to. But, you know, whether it's WWE or AEW or uh, SmackDown Raw, whatever... I mean, there has never really been a... And actually, the same thing with uh, with UFC as well. When they used to do those countdown specials, there really is no correlation between the rating for the go-home show and how the show does on pay-per-view. So, obviously, you would want a better number, but, you know, when they have strong competition, which NBA obviously was because they took the top two spots, it does affect the, the dynamite numbers. 
is this show dying? Is this a horrible number? Of course not. We mention this every week. And uh, I did, I did, uh, I was looking through, Brandon Thurston puts out the, uh, you know, the numbers for the other shows we don't really talk about a lot, like New Japan on Access and Impact. And uh, did you see the uh, demos for those two shows yesterday, Mike? I don't, I saw the overall numbers, but not the demos. Okay, no. this is, this is not meant to be a burial. I just am doing this to kind of point things out. New Japan on Access in 18 to 49 did a 0.00. They did zero, nothing, zilch. They had 5,000 viewers in 18 to 49, which came out to a 0.00. And uh, an impact did a 0.01. Okay. So, uh, you know, again, this is not to, to bury the, the New Japan or Impact. It is merely pointing out that when you have a show like, you know, Dynamite, and it does a .27 and ends up third on cable, and then you hear people go, this show is dying. It's doing terrible. Yeah, it was doing better last year at this time, but... This is not a bad number at all. And then when you look at like these SmackDown demos, when SmackDown does like a 0.63 and smashes everything else on cable and everything else on network, and you know you look at the raw demos. I mean, I did a I did an interview. I can't remember what it was about, but they, you know they ended. They go, is there anything else you want to say to people that don't know much about wrestling? And what I said was, you know, this ain't the 80s where everyone knows Hulk Hogan's name and everything or the 90s boom period. But, dude, wrestling is actually very hot in 2023. You wouldn't know that going on Twitter, but it is. Anyway, back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. You know, we're going over these lineups and... uh, you know, a while ago, they, they did that angle with Jericho and Ricky Starks, and it's about a week ago. I thought, you know, I think that Ricky thinks he's outsmarted Jericho, but, you know, he's he's going to get it. And my, my the- theory was, you know, that Jericho had stated nobody from the Jericho Appreciation Society can interfere or inter- intervene in the match or whatever. And I thought, you know, who's not part of that Jericho Appreciation Society is old Hobbs. And he had a lot of issues with old Ricky Starks. Yeah. Maybe he's going to run in. But then they did all that stuff with Hobbs on uh, on Wednesday. And then, you know, Jericho did an interview talking about, uh, on the Click podcast, where he was talking about various folks. And, you know, by the time it was done, and I actually thought this before I even saw this interview. I, I thought about this when we were reviewing the show yesterday with Vinny. I think there's a decent chance Ricky Starks beats him again. And... You know, he's he's had feuds with various guys. He mentions here he's never got his win back against Action Andretti. And he literally goes as far as to say, I am telling you, I will never beat Action Andretti. Like, he's telling us that's never going to happen. And, you know, he, he lost uh, the feud, so to speak, with Orange Cassidy. And uh, I think there's a, you know, unless they have some sort of a big angle here with Ricky Starks, where something's going to happen and Ricky is, is uh, you could do a deal. You could do a deal where Hobbs does cost Ricky the match. Hobbs then goes on to win the uh, TNT title. And then Ricky, as a result of what happened losing to Jericho, does go on to eventually beat Hobbs for the TNT title. You could actually do something like that. But, uh, you know, Jericho says, my number one mission from day one when we started was to do my best to make new stars. Because at first, I think the company was on my back. I knew you've only got about a month or two. It can't always be Chris Jericho. Cody Rhodes, right out of the gate. He was not the Cody he is now. Mox was still Dean Ambrose. Nobody knew Kenny Omega. Nobody knew the Bucks, Darby, Scorpio, Jungle Boy, Ortiz, Santana, Sammy, Jake. And all these guys. The first three months, I worked with all of them. We had a short window of time to make as many stars as we could. That's always been my goal. Ricky Stark's another guy. People love him. All he needed was a story. He needed to be on TV featured every week, and that's sort of what we've done. Talks about MJF. He says MJF was not the MJF he is now. Working with me for a year helped him become the MJF. 
got him to the next level. All of that was done by design in my head. He responded to detractors online who said that he buries his opponents and the talent he works with. He used his match against Peter Avalon this week on Dynamite as an example. He says, I have the thickest of skins. I know people hate me. I got yelled at last night for beating a young talent like Peter Avalon. How did I bury the young talent of Peter Avalon? What happened in that match? Watch the match. Two minutes long. Peter beat the crap out of me for a minute and 59 seconds. I hit one move. One move. I have never buried anybody in my career ever. Now, sometimes I win. That's okay. I'm allowed to win, guys. It's okay. Making new stars and putting people over is not wins and losses. You can lose to somebody and bury them at the same time. It happened to me in WCW a lot of different times. Then he tells a story about, uh, about Action Andretti that we talked about on the show here many times. But were there really people on the internet that were angry that he beat Peter Avalon on, on Wednesday night? You know, wow. there may have been one or two of them, Brian, but you know what? I've always appreciated Chris Jericho's pettiness. I remember way, way back, and this is going back a long time. I believe it was the late 90s. Wade Keller, I think, wrote something at the Pro Wrestling Torch, and Jericho responded to it. And I wasn't big on I was not big online until the mid-2000s. So I, I remember just thinking of that, going, what is it? I wonder why he cares so much. And then it's just because he hears everything. And he probably, look, there's pros and cons to this. Guys like Chris Jericho only need a little bit. And they can take that little bit that they gave you, that you give him, and then take it and run with it. And then make it work for him somehow or use it as fuel. And that's what I'm sure he's doing when it comes to Avalon, is using that as a bigger talking point to get back at people that may have talked about him burying people or how he works with people you know in other times but to cut all of the fat out of that and to take it back to ricky starks he's right all ricky starks needed was a story and to be on tv every week and you know what chris jericho doesn't need a win over ricky starks you already got a loss to him you beat him down that was your revenge let Starks get the victory. This company needs stars. This company needs as many names as it can get. Ricky Starks right now is something you need to actually strike upon. So great. Beat Chris Jericho. Move him on to something else where he's a regular and involved and towards the top of the mix. You know, I, I uh, vaguely remember, and someone could actually fill us in on this, uh, this Jericho Wade Keller thing. But if I recall correctly... It was a Chris Jericho, Rob Van Dam match. There might have been another one, but this is the one I seem to remember. Chris Jericho had a match with Rob Van Dam, and Wade buried this match. And he gave it, I can't even remember what he gave it, but it will just say no stars or a negative star. I don't know what he gave it, but it was, it was like a horrible rating. And, uh, you know, Jericho was very upset about that because it was not a dud. And I realize everything is subjective, but brother, I've seen a lot of dud matches and it was not a dud match. And then like I went through and okay, what did Dave give this match? You know, what did I give this match? And then I like looked at the online reaction to people of this match. And it was like, everybody <laughs> thought this was a good match. Everybody did. Except for one guy. And there was one guy. Yeah, and it wasn't even it. like, it wasn't even like he thought it wasn't a very good match. But he was like, it was a horrible match. It was a dud. Yay. And so, yeah, come on, brother. We see it with movies all the time where you look back and there were like 900 critics love it. But these couple notable critics, they pan the movie for whatever reason or the album or whatever it is. Yeah, they should be moved from the Motion Picture <laughs> Association of America. Because it's all subjective. Just like judges should be removed from judging if, you, if you're a horrible judge. But you know what? He could have just said, you know what? Alvarez liked it. Meltzer liked it. Uh, Mitchell, whoever was around at the time, Johnson, whoever liked the thing, I could have blown off Wade, but he didn't. And he ended up taking that and he blew it up, kind of maybe blew it out of proportion, but then used the publicity of that and used that again to his advantage. So again, I think Chris Jericho was probably talking to a lot of people and I think probably used that Avalon example that nobody of value probably said a word about and then used that as uh, fodder for other things. Well, you know, we had that uh, Sami Zayn deal. He didn't win in Montreal. And then, you know, we had all these discussions about, uh, about Kofi Mania and all this and that. And uh, Brian Danielson, in an interview with The Ringer, 
said his favorite part of his WWE career was Kofi Mania and his match with Kofi Kingston at WrestleMania 35. He talked about his environmentally sustainable title belt, Kingston riding a wave of fan support, culminating in him beating Danielson for the title. The whole thing was magic, he says. You look at the live events, like the number of shows he did for WWE, the amount of TV time he filled in every time, going out there, always having a positive attitude. What a great human being. It was my favorite match. I think the whole thing was my favorite part of my WWE career. And then, of course, it talks about how he held the title for six months, defended it ten times, and then, of course, was beaten by Brock Lesnar. And, you know, it is funny because I think it was last week on SmackDown, they did that angle. And L.A. Knight comes out, and he's going back and forth with Kofi. And L.A. Knight, you know, he's like, you can't have an L.A. WrestleMania without L.A. Knight. And, of course, the New Day come out, and they're like, actually, you can. Like, nobody would care. And then L.A. Knight's big comeback is, how'd that, how'd that Kofi mania work out for you? And Kofi looks at him, and his response was, bro, it worked out great. It worked out great. Yeah. And you know, the thing with Kofi Mania is, and this is the exact same thing that I said about Sammy. Oh, well, you know, what if Sammy then loses in three weeks or, you know, Roman beats him again or he just loses. Ah, bros, don't fixate on Kofi's seven-second loss to Brock Lesnar and then act like the whole thing sucked. Dude. The, the build to Kofi Mania, the actual win at WrestleMania, like, it was actually great. Yeah, did they book a stupid ending at the very end of it? Yeah. Does that devalue all of it? No. I mean, if that's, if that's the way you're going to look at your life, like, oh, well, you know, I had a great life, but at the end I died. <laughs> so what, you had a horrible life? No, that's just you know, something happened at the end of it. So anyway, I loved Kofi Mania. I love Kofi. Glad he got that that build and that moment and the whole nine yards. Yeah. Don't let me sit there on my on my on my deathbed and go, ah, I'm dying here in the end. What a horrible life I led. Cause at the end, I was I was booked to die. You don't seem like a nihilist like that, but like... Um... No, but we have all these nihilists. Oh, <laughs> Kofi Mania, God. You really well, you want know... to do Kofi Mania with Sammy? Yes! Im imagine Actually, I do! Imagine if Daniel Bryan had not gotten hurt. Remember what happened after all of the, the stuff with the Yes movement? I believe Kane crushed him with pallets that had kegs on it yeah. or something. Remember we were moving into that it and was he ended stupid. up getting hurt? Exactly. Imagine if they would have went through with that. He loses the title to Kane at that time. Would it have taken away everything else? It would not have. With that said, they still rate the right move for Cody. Oh, get out of here, you idiot. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Well, I love old Lenny here. He's a very, very loyal listener. He's always in the in the chat, but man, he will not give up on this thing about WWE does not deserve the benefit of the doubt. Because of what they did with Kofi, they do not deserve any benefit of the doubt. Well, is that and, referring to what is that referring to now? Well, you know, it's kind of like they, they should not have put the title on Sammy because they would have invariably screwed it up because they screwed it up with Kofi. And well, you can listen, make that same claim then for Cody immediately, then. Listen, listen, everybody. Uh, Mike, I mean... But here's... No, no, no. no wait, wait. Let me no, just get my, me. my analogy. As far as like, I asked making him, a mistake with Cody. Hold on. This has nothing to do with that. It's different. Okay, good. Let's say... We, we always have producer Dom here on the show, okay? Producer Dom. Yes. Who was not on the show today, by the way, but... No. Hi, Daniel. Yes. So... Producer Dom, you know, let's let's imagine that producer Dom was horrible at his job. He sucked. Mm -hmm. And like there was a there was some screw up all the time and he messes this up and he messes that up and he screws this up and he screws that up. And then one day he gets fired and uh, an old Daniel takes his job. 
And Daniel's never done the job. You know, Daniel's worked for the station or whatever, but he's never done the job. And then, you know, he gets a job, and I'm just like, uh, I mean, I, I cannot give Daniel the benefit of the doubt. You know, because Dom did such a horrible job, Daniel is invariably going to be doing a horrible job. I cannot trust him. I just can't do this show anymore. I quit. All right, that's, that's what we're talking about here. Like, I, I wanted to know, I, I don't need to know exactly what Lenny does for a living, but I was trying to get, like, what's your job, okay? Because let's imagine that, that you apply for a job and you get the job and you replace somebody that did a horrible job, but once you get that job, like, nobody trusts you, nobody thinks, like, no one wants to, they, they, they just, whatever happened with the old guy, they project all of that onto you. How would that be fair? It's not fair. You, you cannot say Vince screwed up Kofi Mania. Therefore, Hunter is not allowed to have Sami Zayn win the championship in Montreal because he would he would invariably screw it up. The company deserves no benefit of the doubt, even though there is a totally new guy booking the show. How is that fair? It's exactly like like Impact. Like Vinny does this with Impact. I will not watch Impact. Impact was horrible for so many years. I will not watch it. Why? Because, because of what happened with whoa. Dixie when somebody else ran it? Yeah, but Brian, you also are taking out a human factor of this. And the fact of at some point, okay, we've changed it. We've changed we well, okay, we'll see what's different. Okay, we changed it. Now let's see what's it and you live through. You live and then at some point you just go, I don't care. And that's where Vinny's at with impact. And that's we, fine. You, and you know what? To this man, to who was it now in here? Was it Lenny? To Lenny, he may have thrown his hands up and go, you know what? Prove to me Vince isn't there. Prove to me, you know, and you know what? It's going to take some time to prove to that consumer who obviously is still paying attention that, hey, we have changed. But yes, you're exactly right. I agree with you as well, because who's to say that, okay, they belt up Sammy. They don't screw it up. Who's to say they don't belt up Cody at Mania and then they screw up the follow-up? The screw-ups can happen. I have more faith right now in what's gone on with WWE than I have at any point in the last, how many years are we going to go back? How many times have they done things and screwed it up? How many push-pulls and all this stuff with Vince? All this stuff. Right now, it's been the best. Could that just be because we've been we've been in this post Vince era and the newness hasn't worn off, and we're in WrestleMania season and everything is broken? Right? Maybe that's the case. Okay, I'm giving them a little bit of time. But if there are people out there who turn their nose up or are going to take a lot more convincing, I really don't blame them either. All I know is I watch every Raw and I watch every SmackDown and I've watched everything that Triple H has done. And is he a perfect booker? No. Is he miles better than Vince when it comes to booking long-term storylines and, and promoting matches and following through and building to pay-per-views? And yes, he's miles better than Vince. If you don't watch the show, then I don't want you to hear me. I don't want to hear you tell me it's the same. It's not the same. I see it. Mike sees it. Everybody that watches the show sees it. It's not the same. And the issue is not even, you know, I, I'll, I'll give him a chance and then I'll decide. It's like, no, he's not getting a chance. He's not getting a chance. Not going to happen. He, he, I mean, they do not deserve any benefit of the doubt. And actually, they do. They do deserve that, benefit of the doubt. And that's the thing is I, we're not looking at this with rose-colored glasses on here. You know what I'm saying? And I think when you talk to a lot of other people who are kind of, you know, plugged into things, it, it, again, it's still WWE. If there are things you don't like about WWE, the juggernaut, there's no regime change that's going to happen. There's no programming. They're not – 
it's always going to be WWE. And if you just don't like it, there's a zillion and one other options for you to deal with. But if you expect them to fundamentally change, I don't care who the booker or the head of creative is, that's not going to happen. They're just at a different realm right now. And AEW is still a wrestling company. And yes, I know they everything's a sports, everything's an entertainment thing. WWE, fundamentally how they do business and all that other stuff is not going to change. It is certainly not going to change overnight and probably not for decades. Well, what else have we got here? Elio Del Vikingo was going to make his AEW debut on Dynamite this week, but he was not available. And uh, that is how Commander got the shot. Commander is not under contract to AEW. I'm and uh, and according to Dave, he is very much on the radar of WWE. So uh, we'll see what happens with old Commander. He's going somewhere soon, one way or the yeah. other. I'm shocked. I, I might want to say I'm shocked, but both Aries and Commander have been on a lot of people's radars for quite some time. And I know Aries is in a situation with MLW right now with his contract, but with Commander, it's like even some sort of limited contract. I'm, I'm really surprised you put him out there and showcase him like that. I, I guess you really don't lose anything at the end of the day. It just really surprised me because... Again, he would be perfect to have at your disposal for Ring of Honor or for New Japan co-produced shows or for anything with AAA. I mean, he's he's obviously, you saw him. He's pretty damn good. I also got Eddie Kingston debuting for Ring of Honor. So uh, that's the storyline. He has quit AEW, allegedly, and he has uh, jumped to Ring of Honor. And he is challenge champion Claudio Castagnoli. He uh, made the challenge on TV this week following his world title defense against A.R. Fox. He said, I promised John Moxley I would not fight Claudio in AEW, but this is not AEW. Claudio ignored him, so we will uh, see where this goes. But uh, Supercard of Honor is probably a pretty good, uh, pretty good bet, everybody. So uh, that, that uh, Supercard of Honor takes place March 31st, so he's out of AEW at least for a while here. And I guess we'll see if he ends up winning the title or not. If he wins the title, he's obviously going to be there for a while. So uh, that's the update on old Eddie Kingston. So you're going to be in town for that, correct? Uh, yeah, I guess I probably will be. Because, hmm, you know, the last time that we had Eddie Kingston on this show, it got a little bit of attention. And I can just imagine if you two were to meet up and maybe even get Claudio in the same place, you being the mediator between those two men could be some fine, fine radio and video. Well, I'll have to find out when I'm flying in for all that stuff. What is that going to be, a Thursday show, Friday show? I'm going to try to go to Supercard of Honor. How about that? That's, I like it. All right, let's look at some of the text messages here. 425-780-7566 is the phone number. 425 What is this? The problem is we are seeing Brock versus Omos, which feels like a Vince thing. So his lurking presence... May caution people to trust WWE, I guess, even less. Here's the thing, guys, and I'm sorry. Let me jump in on this first. Does Logan Paul and Seth Rollins seem like a WWE thing or a Vince well, thing? Well, it's a oh, WWE Brock thing. Brock and Omos. I mean, it's a WrestleMania thing. WWE, as I just mentioned before, is not going to fundamentally change. There are... Triple H was the one. It's not like he didn't, like, you know, say anything. He got in the casket and said, I screwed her brains out. We've seen some of Paul's comedy over the years. Sure, it may, may not be as fart and burp-based as Vince's is, but he likes to be immature. We are going to have things in WWE that are just WWE. And if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. But you yeah. know what? Brock and Omos would take place in the boardwalk at GCW if they had a chance to pull it off. It's not like WWE be the only ones to pull off that spectacle if given the opportunity to. Well, you know what else, everybody? And it's going to make some people mad. But uh, I'm just going to tell you the truth. WWE has been and remains the largest and most successful wrestling organization on earth since 1998. 2008, 2018, that's 25 years. For 25 years, for 25 years, 
They have been the biggest and the most successful pro wrestling company on the planet. And really, they were, you could go back even further if you, you know, take out that those couple of years where they struggled and WCW did well. So really, I mean, it's been like, you know, forever. I mean, you're, you're allowed to not like it, okay? But why would they fundamentally change? Like, there are things that they could do better, obviously, but, you know, someone brought up the, uh, the McDonald's analogy here. Well, McDonald's is, is the most successful, you know, restaurant. You know, it doesn't mean they're, they're the best restaurant. You're absolutely positively right. However, why would McDonald's fundamentally change? I mean, it wouldn't even make any sense for no, them if, to fundamentally change. If you change. change the president of operations, let's, let's, let's pretend that that's what it is with Triple H and Vince. If you remove the president of operations and he's only this title now and you have this guy running it, you're not going to fundamentally change everything. You just hope the guy that's in place right now, who would be Triple H, can do a hell of a lot better job than that exactly. other guy. That's if you're if you're looking at McDonald's, you could you could say, hey, you know, these, these burgers are whatever. We're going to change them to grass-fed burgers. Burgers. Well, hey, that's a that's a better burger, but you're not fundamentally changing it where, well, now we're only going to sell fish or, you know, we're going to try and be more. Actually, McDonald's for a while tried to be more high end and it yeah. didn't work out very well. It's it's a very, very successful business. And WWE is a very, very successful business. And yeah, there are things about WWE that are way better now. Thank God that Vince is gone. Like, you know, we can actually book storylines and follow through with them. You may not like where they go, but at least they're following through with them. And they announce matches and deliver them, and they don't false advertise anymore. I mean, there are a lot of positive changes, but they're not going to fundamentally change. They're not going to start booking or, or running their promotion like New Japan. It would be foolish to do that. They still should be WWE. They could be better being WWE, but uh, they need to be... WWE. It's a winning formula. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Having a hearty LOL over this tweet here from Tony Khan. Mm. This is one of the best weekends of the year, he says. AW Revolution Sunday in San Francisco, plus Friday night Rampage, then Countdown to Revolution tonight on TNT. 2023 will be the biggest year yet for AW. I have major announcements coming soon that are important to AW and our fans. What's the best gimmick? AW major announcements or the NXT parking lot? Oh, well, you know what? The NXT parking lot always pays off. There's always somebody laid out or kidnapped or something like that. Sometimes with these announcements, we don't you don't get everything that you want. So who knows what everybody's working their minds into right now, wondering what it's going to be. Or it says, LOL, the YouTube chat after you responded to my text regarding Brock and Omos. It's madness in there. Oh, I wish I were there. But I'm not. Any plans to review Ring of Honor weekly television on Brian and Vinny? It seems more relevant than Rampage, at least going into Supercard. I will consider that. I will hmm. consider that. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I can't watch it this week at this rate, but we'll see what happens. Adds, uh, the, what are the odds Omos wins? Will us Omosexuals have our day in court? Do not expect to have your day in court. I don't think he's going to be winning that match against Brock Lesnar. Dude, he didn't, even, he didn't even beat Strowman. Right? What's his finisher? What's Omos's finisher? He does that, uh, he lifts him up and throws him on the ground thing. Uh, see, that would be, yes. if that was more impressive than Brock F5-ing him, then maybe Omos would win. But I think the Brock F5 will win out. Mm. All right, everybody, we got to wrap it up. I am on my way to Rampage here in a while. We'll be back later on tonight with Dave, Saturday night with Dave, Sunday with Dave, allwrestlingobserver.com, video.f4wonline.com. Thanks, Mike, all as always. Dave, all the time. Callers and listeners, Twitch homies. Yeah, even you Twitch homies. We'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.